Okay, this video is on parallel lines and proportional parts. And it's essentially based on, this whole section is essentially based on this one theorem called the parallel lines proportionality theorem. And the parallel lines proportionality theorem just says, if three or more parallel lines intersect two transversals, then corresponding parts of the transversals are proportional. So let's take a look at what this theorem is saying. Here I've got a diagram with three parallel lines, and those parallel lines are intersecting these two transversals. In fact, let me call this transversal 1. I'll call this T1 and T2 for transversal 1 and transversal 2. So these three parallel lines are intersecting these two transversals. So according to this theorem, the corresponding parts of the transversals are proportional. So you can see the parallel lines, they're basically chopping up these two transversals into these parts here and here. So this theorem just says that these corresponding parts are proportional. In other words, I could write a proportion with them. So, for example, the length of segment AB, that corresponds to the length of segment DE. That's proportional to BC and EF. And notice when you write your proportion, all of the pieces of this first transversal, they show up here in the numerator, right? Transversal 1, AB, and BC, these are both the pieces of transversal 1. And all the pieces of transversal number 2 show up here in the denominator. So transversal 2, that's DE and EF. DE and EF are in the denominator. So this is basically all this theorem is saying. Let's see how we're going to use this theorem in solving some problems using parallel lines. So here's example number 1. Each one of these examples I want to solve for x. And I have these three parallel lines. And notice in your notes, the instructions say all lines that appear to be parallel are parallel. So I have these three parallel lines. And here's my two transversals. If I want to call that T1 and T2. Well, here are my corresponding parts of these two transversals. So all I need to do is just set up a proportion here using these corresponding parts. So 9 and 6 are corresponding, 15 and x. And I have a proportion which I can solve by cross multiplying. So 9 times x equals 6 times 15. And let's see, 6 times 15 is 90. So 9x equals 90. I divide both sides by 9, and I get x equals 10. Example number 2. Again, I have three parallel lines. I have two transversals. I'll call this T1 and T2. Here are my corresponding parts of my transversals. Again, I just need to set up a proportion using these corresponding parts. So 10 and 8 are corresponding. X and 12 are corresponding. Again, notice these are my T1 parts, 10 and X. And these are my T2 parts. 8 and 12. So I've got a proportion. I cross multiply. 8x equals 120. I divide both sides by 8. And I get 8x equals 15. Example number 3. All right, again, this is basically the same picture, except it's just turned on, kind of on its side, so it looks a little bit different. But again, I've got, if I want to call this T1, transversal number 1, this is transversal number 2, and here are my three parallel lines. So my parallel lines divide these transversals into proportional parts, and my proportional parts now are these parts and these parts. So now, once again, I can just set up a proportion. So let's see. You do 6 and x. Those are proportional. 3 and 4. And this is T1. And this is T2, the parts of T1 and the parts of T2. I got my proportion. I just cross multiply. 
3x equals 24, so x equals 8. Now example number 4. This one is a little bit different. Again, I have my parallel lines, and they're dividing these two transversals. And I would like to just kind of set up my proportions here, except I don't have an expression here for this piece of this transversal. This is transversal 1 and this is transversal 2. So I'm told that this whole length here, from here to here, this is x, and this piece from here to here is 10. Well, then I know that I can write an expression for this piece right here. If this whole piece is x and this whole piece is 10, then this piece must be x minus 10. So now I have an expression there. Now I can set up my proportion. Here are my corresponding parts. So let me set up my proportion. 15 over 10 equals 12 over x minus 10. And let's see, cross multiply, it's going to give me 15x minus 150 equals 120. I'm going to add 150 to both sides. And come over here. Add 150 to both sides, my 150s go away here. That's going to give me 15x equals 270. And I divide both sides by 15. And I get x equals 270 divided by 15. Let's see, 270 divided by 15. And that's going to be 8. 1200, yes, so x equals 18. Now, example number five. Example number five, let's take a look at this picture. I'm going I'm to get you started on it and then let you take it from here. Notice that at first it looks like, well, this doesn't match the other ones. In particular, it looks like this picture isn't going to work using the parallel lines proportionality theorem because, remember, the parallel lines proportionality theorem says we need three or more parallel lines intersecting two transversals. Well, I only have two parallel lines, so it looks like I'm not going to be able to use my parallel lines proportionality theorem. However, if you recall, we learned about something called the Playfair axiom, which tells us that I can always draw a parallel line through any point that's not on another parallel line. In other words, I can draw a third line that's parallel to both of these lines through this point right here. So if I draw that line right there, and I just say, well, I'm going to make this line parallel to this line. Therefore, it's also going to be parallel to that line. The Playfair axiom tells me I can do that. Now I have three parallel lines cut by these two transversals. Let me call this T1 and T2. And now I have a diagram that looks just like the ones that I had before. So here, again, are my corresponding parts of these two transversals. And I can set up a proportion, and I can solve for x. So I'm going to let you finish example number five. Then you have a few more examples in your notes. I'm going to let you finish those on your own. And we'll take a look at those in class tomorrow.